Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net. And today we're going to be taking a look at our new plugin, Optical Flares for Nuke, which is our powerful lens flare plugin for After Effects, is now native inside of Nuke. So we're going to take a look at some of the custom features designed specifically for the Nuke version, as well as give you a basic workflow of how the software works. Okay, so we've got some footage here, some cars driving by, and we're using optical flares to create some cool, realistic looking lens flares. So our raw footage looks something like this, but uh, we want to spruce it up, make it a little more exciting, so we can either add explosions or lens flares. So this is optical flares. So today, we're going to be taking a look at lens flares. So if we come over to our node view, we can see we have some raw footage here. And then we have our optical flares that's composited over the background. Now, I can double click on our optical flares node. And this is where we can control the settings. So brightness, scale, we've got a color tint. And we've also got some other cool options like flicker and even aspect ratio right inside here. Now, the primary feature of optical flares is the advanced custom UI and editor. What this allows you to do is edit lens flares. So in this case, this is the default lens flare. We've got control over uh, you know, specific parts. We can hide, solo, different elements. We can scroll through, rename, reorder. This is basically where you create your preset or edit and customize existing presets. So we can come over here to the browser and uh, we can take a look at some of these different presets here. Um, you know, some of them have some great looking elements. You can even take presets, right click on other presets and combine them by adding to current. And so you can really create some, uh, some fascinating and uh, interesting looks. Come back over here and all the presets are ready to go and customize. So feel free to jump in and uh, just start playing with the different looks. So we'll go and hit cancel and let's take a look at setting up this scene. So what we have here is two lens flares that are rendering on each of the headlights. In this particular project, we're using Nuke's built-in tracker to set the position of the lens flare. So let's go ahead and delete these and uh, take a look at setting this up. So here we just have uh, some footage with a little bit of color correction on just to make it look a little more like New York because apparently it's always got this color correction. So the way it works is we can click on our node and we can come over here to VC, Video Copilot, and apply optical flares. So this will composite directly in the flow. Now, if your root format is different than your footage, you just need to set the footage resolution. And uh, here we have our lens flare. So we can take it, you know, we can come over to the position, set a keyframe, and we can go through and keyframe it uh, to align with the vehicle. So you can animate by hand, or we can use some tracking data. What I'm gonna do actually is delete the optical flares We'll click on our footage node, we'll hit tab and type in tracker, and we'll hit return, and this will allow us to use the Nuke tracker. So we'll come down here, add a track point. Let's go and zoom in here, and uh, we'll take our track point, and uh, we'll stick it on here. And we're just gonna track this headlight. So I wanna make it nice and large since uh, the vehicle's coming towards us. And uh, we'll go ahead and track forward here. So we'll just click this here, And uh, we lose it a little bit here. Let's go and make this bigger and uh, track for the end. So it goes out of the frame. That's okay. We'll just do a little hand track here at the end and maybe move forward a few frames and uh, just hand track it off. So that way we can have the flare move completely out of frame. So we've created this track point. So let's go and close the tracker and uh, we'll hit H. And so now we have this great tracking data. Now, instead of adding it directly to the flow, I'm just gonna click away here and then add optical flares. So this is gonna add it separately. We can hit one, we can look at it. And what we're gonna do is click on it and hit M. We're gonna merge it with the backplate. So this is all the backplate here. We're gonna take this color correction and merge it right into the B spot. So essentially we're compositing A over B. So optical flares over the background. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go to optical flares, 
Set the format to HD. The nice thing about using a merge node is I can apply color correction to the lens flare without affecting the background. So if we select the node, we can hit C and that'll add a color correction node that we can, you know, bring the gamma down, maybe, you know, bring the saturation down, all that good stuff. So it's kind of handy to sort of keep it separate before we composite it. Now what we want to do is double click on the optical flares node and link it to the tracking data. Here's how easy that is. We click on the animation menu. Go to link to tracker one, track point one. And so instantly we've got our lens flare following the position of the car, shoots out of frame, and the lens flare is gonna fade out as it exits the uh, matte box. So there we go, pretty cool. And you can also tell here that, you know, optical flares rendered pretty fast as HD, and uh, you know, we're, uh, we're getting some pretty good performance. This is the basic idea of using optical flares for Nuke. We can, you know, change the scale, we can bring the brightness down if we want it to be a little more realistic, uh, but hey, who am I to judge? Let's say we want to add some more lens flares. What we could probably do is duplicate our lens flare node and, you know, do exactly what we did again, merge it over top. Or what we can do is go back into the tracker node and track another point. So check this out. We're going to add a track, come in here, grab the point, go to the beginning, and uh, we're going to track the uh, other headlight here. So we'll track forward, pull back here. Okay, so we're losing it a bit here. And let's just go do some hand tracking really quick and then just pull it way out of frame. So here we have a, you know, a pretty good track of the other headlight. All right, so let's go back to our merge. We'll hit one and let's go and add another lens flare. So we'll double click on the same optical flares node. And we have this thing called additional 2D flares. So if we bring that open, we can add an additional lens flare. So we'll hit one. And so now we have another lens flare. So we can take it, do the exact same thing, link to tracker number two. So there we go. And now it's even brighter. You know, we can bring the brightness down a bit. And uh, there we've got two nice looking lens flares. So this is really cool. So if you have a particular shot that has a lot of similar looking lights, you can actually rope in several track points. We put 16 in there. And uh, of course, you can add another instance of optical flares. All right, so let's say we want to add a different lens flare preset. So right here, these are some LED lights, but maybe the car in the back has some halogen lights. We want it to be a warm colored lens flare. So what we can do is use the same tracker notes. So we'll go back to the tracker and just add another point. And let's track this position. So we'll go and hide the tracker and uh, we'll click away here and we're going to add another instance of the optical flares node. So we'll bring that out. And what we want to do is merge it. So we'll hit M and we're going to merge it with the background. So we'll drag it in between to be able to input that as the backside or the back. So now we have our second optical flares. We double click on that and let's set the format to HD and then we'll set the position to link to tracker number three. Ah, so let's make it a little smaller, maybe bring the brightness down and even tint the color of it. So we'll give it kind of a more of a warm color or a very warm, extremely warm color. So there we go. We've got all of our lens flares going on. We've got this one. And again, it's separate, so we can uh, we can add some color correction to it, maybe desaturate it a little bit, even you know even add like a blur. Uh, hit B, you know we can add a different a blur node, and you'll notice that the optical flares, everything's all floating point, and uh, you know if we look at some of the settings here, you've got things like color space that you can set, you can do a custom gamma, um, so it's very streamlined for any kind of a workflow. Now, one really cool feature that's only in optical flares for Nuke is if we open up optical flares and go into the options, there's actually a new option inside of the global parameters. So if you click on the global parameters, turn on this offset scale. 
So what this will do is if we just preview the scale here, you can see that all of the elements zoom in equally. But if we turn on offset scale, it'll actually scale up evenly and it also scale down evenly. So what's nice about this is if you're using some really cool anamorphic flares, um, you know, like this JJ flare, for example, where it's got a very wide kind of dual light source. But if the offset scale is off and we scale it down, we start to get some separation here. So if we turn that back on, we get a much more realistic scale as things move down and, you know, you can create some smaller pings of light, uh, you know, in your shot. So if the flare seems like it's a little bit too big, you can always scale it down. And now with the offset scale, you can get all the elements and offsets to scale down uniformly. So really cool feature. Um, of course, you have things like your lens texture. So you can load some really cool looking lens textures, turn up the illumination radius, brightness. So you can get some nice, uh, you know, on lens grunge and stuff. And there's also things like matte box control. So you can control when the lens flare fades out. So you can maybe bring this down and lower the fade so that once it gets out, it just goes away quickly. And you'll also notice that some of the presets have some cool edge flare up and, uh, you know, dynamic looking effects. You know, like you can see some of these lens elements fade out at a certain point. So some really cool ways uh, that you can use some of the dynamic animation uh, to build your uh, flare preset. So, so those are just a few key features. Now, finally, I want to show you the 2D matte occlusion. So what I'm going to do is import some footage. So we'll just leave this here. We're just going to start over. And this 3D set was made with Element 3D, another one of our After Effects plugins. And uh, the particles are from Particular. So what I want to do is add a lens flare. So we'll go ahead, add a flare, and we'll merge it with the background. So I think this is 720p. So let's go ahead, double click, and we'll set this to uh, 720p really quick. Now, usually your root format is the same as your working format, but this is just something I threw together. Um, so we can go ahead and we can put our lens flare right here, you know, at this sort of hot spot of the particles. So what we want to do is allow the lens flare to go out as these bottom chess pieces sort of block the view of the lens flare. So here, let's just go ahead, enable this. So we see the camera goes by and we want it to kind of blink out a little bit. What we can do is use a mat. So you can either create your own mat using like a roto shape or in this case, I actually have just a 2D mat that was rendered out as a separate pass. So let's go and reroute optical flares A over B. And optical flares has another option here called mat. So if we bring this up over here, we can just bring the mat right up into our mat layer. So then we'll double click on optical flares, come down here to the 2D mat occlusion, and we're going to enable it. And then we'll set the sample method to luma mat. So now if we scrub through this, you'll see that the lens flare goes out as it crosses the large chest pieces that are in front. Now it goes out kind of abruptly, kind of pops on and off. What we can do actually is increase the light radius to like 20. And what that will do is give it a little bit of fade out time as it blinks out behind the other elements. So let's just take a look. So very nice. We've got a nice little uh, blink out effect. Uh, we could do another color correction on this. All right, so this is the 2D layer occlusion that you can use. And uh, sure beats having just animate the uh, brightness in and out as uh, things get blocked out. All right, so these are just some of the cool features in optical flares for Nuke. There's also some cool features like 3D occlusion. So you can use a 3D scene and uh, import light data and create some lens flares from your 3D data. So it's very dynamic. It's very cool. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation. My name is Andrew Kramer. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time.